learned about you when I was a student with John back at Widener. Okay. He would always talk about his New York super friends. So how did you get to meet John? We knew each other in college in Philadelphia. I think he went to a different school. I went to Tampa University and John was someplace in the suburbs. And we played in big bands in Philadelphia a long time ago. So you were, and so as you're playing today, uh, these years later, how does the, how does that feel? Well, it's great being with him. He's one of my dear friends from the old days. Uh, one thing that's great, and he gave me a little history of his world with Oliver Nelson. Uh, I'm sure all over the country. Yo, boss, we in here trying to do an interview. What are you doing? <laughs> That was John, by the way, on the... That's, I had to do that. Would you like to ask me that again? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, uh, how, is, how does it feel to be a part of this Oliver Nelson project and also knowing your friendship for all these years? Well, it's great being with John since we've known each other so long since school. I know we played some of these tunes years ago in the big bands that we worked in, not with the newer version of the arrangements that he's rewritten, that he's rewritten, uh, but it's great to play these tunes that in Philadelphia were on the radio all the time. Great influence in my life. Uh, and I know John's too, and as he was telling me the last few days, uh, he went to a jazz camp as a student with Oliver Nelson, as the, the person running it, and got to be good friends with him. Oliver Nelson sent him some charts. And for the last 40 years, 45 years, John's been thinking about doing a project like this. So having a chance to record music that I grew up with it's very exciting. There's, when we're playing, I'm sure a lot of the guys feel like this. There's chills going up and down your spine from hearing the melodies that you've always heard and played, and now you get a chance to play the original arrangements, or somewhat close to the original arrangements, with as close to the vibe from the original Cats as possible, with their own little thing thrown in. It's a, it's a great experience. How do you, uh, from the bass <clears throat> seat, and as you hear these arrangements, uh, how would you, in musical terms, describe what John has contributed to Oliver's reimagining of these songs? It's a new instrumentation. It's a different instrumentation. I know he's using the two French horns, which is a little different than the original, I think. Uh, different voicings, sometimes closer voicings. Matter of fact, on the last take of one of the tunes, uh, he wanted to listen back to it to see there was a difference between a D and a D flat in the French horns. And he said, well, let me hear both. And he hears every note of every part. He said, keep the D flat. It's real close to the C. There's a lot of tension. I like the way it sounds. So he's throwing his kind of darker, closer harmony inside of the original harmony, which sometimes was dark and close. Sometimes it was open. So, and I know from the bass chair, I have to choose a note from the bass to make these voicings sound good. Even though I have the changes written in front of me, I hear the voicing, I might choose another note. You might not hit the root, you might hit the third, you might hit the fifth. And you know that instinctively as soon as you hear the chart in your headphones. Mm. So there's a lot going on. Uh, I have a lot of freedom with my parts. There's a lot to read, but there's a lot of freedom too. And knowing John for all these years, how he hears music, he's also a great trumpet player, so he hears all the parts. And he almost hears like a bass player. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as you're going through this, the, uh, the interplay, how do you... So Danny Godley's playing drums and your friends for years. How does that interaction help you with sort of in this orchestration of a small group with horns playing along? How does that, does that make a difference for you? Like the friendships and the... Completely, uh, we totally trust each other. So if he wants to take it somewhere rhythmically, I'm there with him in a second. If I want to go someplace... Who trusts you? If Danny and I completely trust each other. We've known each other for over 40 years. We were in the rhythm section for Pat Metheny years ago and 
done a million gigs together. So when you trust somebody like that, you can play anything and you know they're with you all the way. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. It's a conversation. It's a close relationship. You never know what you're going to say to each other until you say it. Then the other person responds. But trust is a very important part of it. How would you tell a non-musician what it feels like to have the precision of a connection that's just oral sound? Well, I know the guys that I used to work for did it like this. I used to play with Stan Getz and Dizzy and Miles Davis and the people who invented modern jazz. And I know when they grew up, uh, there were no texts written on how to improvise. And they had to listen to all the records and play along with the records. Dizzy tried to, uh, Miles tried to play it like Dizzy, Dizzy tried to play it like Louis Armstrong. And you get the precision from playing along exactly like your idol on the record. Hmm. I know I did the same thing. The guys before me did that, and the guys before them did that. Whatever. So you can get the precision uh, definitely by going to school and practicing something over and over again until you learn how to do it. First slowly, then improving the tempo, getting it faster and faster. Or you're exactly unison with the soloist. And precision, the misnomer is people think it's, it's so hard, it sounds so difficult. It's not difficult, it just takes time. But it's not difficult, it's fun. And is that connection between, say, the bass and the drum, a, uh, is there something in it that's, that you can relate to a personal, like, husband-wife relationship, even though you're only here for a day, uh, two days, three days, is there something that happens inside you that, that 100%. clicks? 100%. You love each other. You completely love each other. And there's, there's an empathy. You can get that in any kind of relationship, but there's almost no relationship closer in the world than a bass player and a drummer. Mm. Because we try to play in the same part of the beat, you know, the beat's over here. Some guys play on top, some people play on the bottom. It depends on the music. Each chart we're doing, you have to adjust yourself according. The horns are a little behind because it grooves a little bit harder. It's a wider beat, it's a fatter beat. So sometimes Danny and I have to be on top of it just to keep them cool. Mm. Sometimes you back up with the horns. Sometimes you have to be a little on top. Danny, that's what we're talking about between takes. How does it sound with the beat? And it's pretty intricate. Um, I'm a teacher also, I'm going into my 30th year at NYU now, and we both practice this. Dan and I have practiced this since we were kids. With a metronome, a lot of people practice exercises where the beat is over here, and then later on in life you become a jazz musician, then you practice grooving over here, or grooving over here, or grooving over here. And then when you're in a situation like this, playing Oliver Nelson tunes, each chart requires a different vibe. And we've studied this, God knows how many years since probably elementary school for both of us. And you both, and you trust each other that you know that information. And uh, it's a very close knit, it's a very close feeling, completely close feeling. John has told us, told me, how important you are specifically to his arrangements. It's your decision making as a bass player. Um, how does that make you feel? I didn't realize that, but it makes me feel very good. He feels the groove that I'm feeling. He trusts me. I trust John. Uh, it's nice to hear that. It's very nice to hear. It makes me feel great. It's a wonderful feeling when, not just between bass and drums, but anybody you're working with, trusts what you do. Um, it could be music, it could be anything else in life. It's a great feeling, and it's very nice to hear that. Thank you. And it's true. All right, great, thanks. This is getting too noisy. Awesome, thank you.